this talk, just kind of briefly go over some standard power sample size um, for time to event endpoints. Um, and then, you know, I'm going to kind of go into the assumptions that are used to derive the patient numbers that are needed to um, realize those um, number of events in a certain time point and, um, you know, kind of, you know, outline a strategy for estimating um, the analysis timing once interim data are available. And I'm going to show you results from a simulation study where I'm going to look at, say, the best fitting distributions of that observed data. Uh, and I'm going to kind of compare that to, like, the best fitting uh, exponential distributions, which is what's usually used in sample size determination, and show there's a pretty big difference there, and uh, just conclude that the distributional form of the event and the dropout data matters a lot. Uh, so, time to event endpoints, um, you know, they're used a lot. Uh, in oncology trials, you know, overall survival, that's the gold standard. Progression-free survival, disease-free survival. Um, these are common, you know, primary endpoints or certainly secondary endpoints in oncology trials. So uh, we all know, like, the, the power for time to event endpoints is direct based, uh, directly based on the number of events. And then we estimate the number of patients that are needed to realize the targeted number of events in the desired time frame. So factors that influence the, the timing of the events uh, and the number of patients needed uh, accrual rate, the event rate, um, dropout rate, and follow-up time. So again, the, the, the power for your trial is directly based on the number of events that are needed. So Here's the, the formula that we could use that. Um, but then, again, we're going to try to estimate, well, how many patients are, we needed, are needed to observe those number of events? Um, you know, assuming like a accrual of a, a certain duration and then follow-up of a certain duration. And usually the, the sample sizes, um, they assume that the event and the dropout times follow an exponential distribution. And kind of what I've been seeing the last two real life data sets that I've observed for time to event data is that uh, the exponential does a pretty poor job of, of modeling the actual time to event. So, um, so I'm sure like we've all kind of, you know, done our um, sample size for time to event endpoints and, you know, oftentimes we're kind of, we don't have very good estimates for, um, like, the accrual rate, uh, the distributional form of the events. Um, we assume the exponential distribution, you know, primarily for ma mathematical convenience and that's what the standard software has. Um, Often we're only given an uh, estimate of what the median, say, overall survival is for a control group. That's, that's all that we have. Um, we often really don't know what the tail of the distribution looks like. Um, and same, same for uh, the distributional form of dropouts. You know, they have the same issues as for the events. Um, so typically, like, at least what I do is, you know, often assume exponential distribution with, say, 5 to 10 percent dropout rate per year for PFS, or, or say, a 1 to 5 percent dropout rate uh, per year for overall survival. Um, so the, the uncertainty in the, in the distributional form of the events and the dropout, um, what I'm finding out is that kind of leads to considerable imprecision in estimating, well, when will that, you know, last event occur, when will we actually be doing the, the analysis? And th this could have implications on the number of patients needed. So I'm just going to kind of go through a, a quick um, power calculation sample size that was kind of constructed based on real data I have. 
and I'm going to try to show you some of the, the issues that I'm finding um, with you know, estimating the, the analysis timing. So let, let's just assume we have this. Um, going to power our, our trial to have 90% power to detect a hazard ratio of 0 0.6. Um, let's assume that you know, we've got data from some other study for the control where it says the median is 6.3 months. Um, you know, we're going to assume the median for the active is 10.5 months. Let's just say, okay, we'll assume 10% dropout rate per year. Hope it'll be less than that. Um, let's say, you know, we think we can accrue this in 24 months. Um, we're going to follow all patients uh, for six months after the last patient randomized. And so that says that we need approximately 120 patients per arm to realize these 161 events. Okay, so now I'm gonna go for, let's so, you know, say I had that same trial, and now let's say I've got some um, interim data. And so um, I'm gonna try to estimate when will that 161st event occur. And so the approach that I've been um, trying to implement is that, um, let's see, I'm going to um, pick the best distributions to model the event and dropout data. And uh, like I use PROC, LIFREG, and SAS uh, to estimate what data fits the best. And you could use like the AIC or the BIC statistic to pick the best distribution. And in LIFREG, there's several options that you can use, like uh, exponential distribution, Weibull, generalized gamma, uh, log normal, log logistic. And uh, so I'm going to simulate from those distributions. So I'm going to do that for both the event data and the dropout data. And um, let's see. I'm going to use the actual accrual time for those patients that have already been randomized to date and let's say I'm in the middle of accrual, then I'll also kind of pick an end time and kind of simulate new patients, you know, from say the data cutoff until that end time. Um, I, I'm gonna use the actual event and dropout time data when it's available, but for the remaining patients, I'm gonna simulate, and I'm gonna simulate from my best fitting distributions um, for those patients that are still in follow-up, you know, I know they've gone a certain time before having an event, so for my simulations, I'm going to require that their, the simulated event and dropout times are beyond that period. Um, and then for the new patients that are, that I'm simulating, you know, I'm just, you know, just simulate from those distributions. So, um, you know, I, I'm going to run 10,000 simulated trials, and I'm going to record the timing of the last event relative to the end accrual for each trial, and then I'm just going to summarize the timing of that last event across the 10,000 trials. So, so here's the simulation study that, that I did. Um, simulate 10,000 trials. Um, number 240 patients, that was kind of my... Um, sample size from the design, but I'm going to back off a little bit from that uh, and do a few patients more. Um, I just kind of outlined again the um, simulation strategy that I had um, for the, the um, data that I used. Uh, accrual was approximately 75% complete and about 50% of the events had already been realized. Um, so again, I'm going to uh, simulate from the best fitting distributions. I'll show you in a minute just what, what the data looked like, but it was from a gamma for the event and from a Weibull distribution for the discontinuations. And then just to kind of compare, again, kind of what the, the standard software does they assume exponential? So I'm going to use the best fitting exponential distribution for the event and the discontinuations. 
and we're going to kind of compare what the event timing looks like across those different trials. So, so here's some actual event data. Um, again, about 50% of the events have been realized, so um, you know, about 80 or so events. So you can see the, um, you know, the standard Kaplan-Meier curve there. Here's the, the air, 90%. 95% air bars for the Kaplan-Meier. So these are the um, different distributions. And so the, again, these came out of uh, proc LIFREG, the parameters. And I'm just plotting these distributions. But notice here, so the best fitting distribution is the, this gamma. So here, notice um, the exponential. It's kind of hard to see, but it's, it was actually the second worst fitting distribution. Um, so here's the event dropout data, um, same, same type of plot here. So for this one, the, the Weibel distribution, that one fit the best, the green one. Um, exponential didn't do um, too good in, the, in this situation either. But so, so here's the, the summary of the simulations again. So, so our design was to get 161 events. Um, here, when I set n equals 225 per trial, um, here's the best fitting distributions, again, a gamma and the Weibel for the event and the dropout data. This is the best fitting exponential. So look at the difference in the timing of the last event relative to a cool end. So the, the exponential set about nine months, um, whereas simulating from the best fitting distributions is you know, like twice that. Um, here's for 240. This, is, this was the design set, uh, setting for, for my trial from the start. And you can see the, like the exponential, it's, it's about right what I said it would be, you know, six months after a cruel end. Um, you know, 9.3 months here was the median across these 10,000 trials for the best fitting distributions. Um, as the sample size gets larger, it, it seems like the difference between the best fitting and the exponential, it's not nearly as great. But, you know, if you're kind of up in here, a situation where you're relying on most of the patients to experience the event, there can be a considerable di difference, I guess, in the timing of what you say planned under the exponential and what you may actually observe. So, um, conclusion, so estimating the timing of the last event, it's, it's highly variable. Um, it's particularly variable if you're relying on most of the patients to realize an event, say 80% of your patients have an event. Uh, exponential distribution may not fit the, the time to event data very well and may underestimate the tail. And this could result in a large underestimation of the, um, of the analysis timing. So uh, simulation's a good tool to use. Um, you know, we can use observed data, interim data to guide the simulations if, uh, say, enough events are available to model the data. Um, you could use historical data. Um, if you are going to be able to, um, you know, estimate the parameters, a lot of times that's a problem for our trials, right? A lot of times we only get, like, you know, we only know what the median for, say, the control is. So, you know, you kind of have to use the exponential, but, um, but once you uh, obtain some data, then, then you can use this um, method that I outlined. And I know I've been talking with Shark a bit, and you know, East is uh, implementing some tools to help with this. Uh, in my example, I used blinded data for the modeling. Um, you could separately model each treatment arm from blinded data. Um, if, he, if you're in that situation.